Hi everyone, it's Henry here. And in this video, I'm going to be revisiting the very first tutorial I did for the channel, which was a Horus Heresy era Imperial Fists um, how to sort of paint recipe. It was very, very short, and it's not really the same as all the other videos in the Heresy series. And quite often, I'm getting messages saying, Oh, can you redo it? Or can you do another one? So I thought, why not? It'd be good fun. But I wanted to do something slightly different. So I've gone for a darker, colder, and a much more high contrast. Uh, scheme than that original one. So if you want to use that old recipe, you still can just substitute the colors in for what we're going to do in this. And it is an army painting recipe. So we're going to look at getting the most impact we can in a reasonable time frame so we can get those armies on the table. Now let's paint. Over a black primer, I'm going to base coat the model using Thondia Brown by Games Workshop. This is a, a colder brown and it just gives us a, a little bit more to work with than going straight over black uh, for the next few phases. I've thinned this down about one drop of thinner to paint, maybe two drops of thinner to paint, somewhere in the middle there. Um, I've just used normal airbrush thinner with this, uh, mixed it together in the cup, and I'm spraying it through at about 25 PSI in our Harder and Steenbeck uh, Eve uh, Infinity. This one, I've finally cleaned my Infinity out, so I'm using that, uh, which has got a 0.4 millimeter needle and nozzle in it. So once you've got a nice solid base coat, and if I was doing this across an army, I would absolutely be rattle canning this base coat. Just find a brown that you like. Color Forge, you've probably got a good one, something like that. Now we want to do the highlighting, and I'm going to look at lighting in from above, obviously, but also from that top right corner as we look at it on the front, and the top right corner as we look at it on the back. And I'm going to use Tamiya Flat White. This is one of my favorite paints for using for doing a pre-shade with. And I thin this about four drops of Tamiya X20A thinner to paint. Still the same pressure with the airbrush, same airbrush, etc. And you need to use the Tamiya thinners when you're using the Tamiya paints. One of the reasons I like using Tamiya so much is that you can thin it down loads so you can get very, very translucent coats of paint on with it so you can build it up, um, but you can still maintain control. Now, I'm a bit lazy when it comes to thinning ratios, which is why I often don't give you exact ones. Um, I tend to adjust as I go. And you can see here, this is too speckly. There's little spots of paint. And this is where our paint is too thick uh, or the, you know, it, for the pressure that we're spraying it at. So I've added a little bit more thinner, mixed it up again, and off we go. And you can see immediately how much smoother that paint is going on. Now, the first few coats you do with this are always gonna look a little bit sort of mottled, a little bit speckly, but that will smooth out as you apply more of them. It's key that you can just try and spot the difference between that and when your paint isn't thin enough for what you're doing. So I'm going to work my way around the model a few times and I'm going to keep these highlights quite, quite tight, which means I'm going to leave quite a lot of the shadow. And this sort of dramatic uh, difference between our highlight and our shadow areas is what's going to create quite a lot of contrast. Now, it's not necessarily my taste, um, but it, it undeniably has a, a high impact when the models are on the table. Um, and also I did a very low contrast on the Imperial Fist I previously painted. So I figured why not show you sort of two options and you can decide what you like and, and tweak it and go from there. So I'm just gonna keep working around the model, adding more of the white paint. Again, because it's so thin, I'm not worrying about obscuring any of the detail. And as we build up those very thin layers of white over the dark brown, we start to get, you know, a variety of tones. It's like a gray scale, but it's just it's brown and white rather than black and white. But it's going to give us a very different looking yellow at the end of it. And I'm just putting a little extra effort and time around the sort of focal area of the model. So his chest and his sort of shoulder plates, of the backpack, those things that are the key silhouette when we think about painting a space marine or looking at a space marine. It's just making sure there's plenty of light in that area. Now you can see, it might seem like this is quite a long stage, but it sets up basically everything we're gonna do after this. So if you can get this bit right, the rest is gonna be easy. Now for the yellow, I've chosen the aptly named Imperial Fist Contrast Paint. I've thinned this, uh, probably two drops of thinner to paint. Again, just normal airbrush thinner. It's still spraying the same pressure, same airbrush. And one thing I've found with using very, very translucent layers of paint to put our main color on is that if you're not careful, you end up missing certain areas. 
and they don't get covered with the color and you have to try and go back in and fix them and then you end up getting too much paint in one area than you would in another. Sorry about that noise, my dog's just come in. Um, so if you look at the back of his legs here, you see the right one there has two coats of the paint on and the left one only has the one and the difference is, is pretty stark. So what I tend to do is when I'm applying my first coat or two of the color, I'm going to tilt the model away from me. So I try and always hit the shadows uh, first. Now, you don't need to whine. I'm, I'm doing a Warhammer tutorial here, Poppy. You need to, need to shush. Um, and we'll apply that paint sort of as say into the shadows. And then when we turn it the right way up and hit those, the, the sort of areas that you see most of the time, we can be confident that we've got some color in the shadows um, and we don't have to go in and, and get those those weird effects that we can sometimes. But I think this Imperial Fist Yellow is a really good example of the, the, the difference of two to three coats that, that contrast makes um, over than just the one. Um, and with that in mind, I would always suggest that when you think it's more or less where you want it, really let it dry. Either get the hairdryer on it or go make a cup of tea and come back and then decide if it's the right colour. Because if you reapply it another layer and it goes past the point where you want it, it's very hard to bring that back. Now I just wanted to add a little bit of some additional colour in there. So I've chosen another contrast paint. Uh, this is snake bite leather. I've thinned it a touch more, so I guess three drops of thinned paint, something like that. Uh, and I'm just going to fire this into all the areas of shadow. And what I want to do is get a little bit of overspray hitting between the shadows and between the highlights, so you, the mid-tone area effectively, just to give us a, a little bit of additional colour in there. It warms it up a little, um, but doesn't alter it hugely. Now obviously you can choose to do as many or as few of the steps as you want and I think for a lot of people if you can get your pre-shade right and then bang one colour over it and you're happy, fantastic, go with it, off you go. If you are really enjoying your painting and maybe you want to push on and, and try and get best army nominations and, and really enjoy looking at it on the shelf as well as on the table, and doing these little extra steps, so adding some colour into the shadows, adding another highlight like we're going to do now, they'll just elevate the model a little bit and it doesn't take a huge amount more time. Uh, for this I'm using Bad Moon Yellow, uh, this is a layer paint by Games Workshop and I've thinned this again about three drops of thinner to paint so it's quite a dilute consistency. Uh, same pressure and stuff but be aware that with it being so dilute if you spray too much on an area at once it is going to spider off everywhere and ruin it so just take your time. And for this, I'm just hitting those areas of highlight. And what this is going to do is, is bring that yellow back to that, that sort of more faded lemon yellow type colour rather than that quite rich yellow we were starting to get. And this is usually the point in the tutorial where I start going, oh, yeah, maybe... Maybe I could paint a few of these and they'd look pretty cool. I'm so in love with this Mark VI kit. It's just incredible. I've painted a lot of them already and I just want to paint more. Um, but I've uh, done a few fists armies, so I think it's time to move on. So once that's all dry, again, I've just got the hairdryer on it to make sure it's properly dry. I'm going to give it a couple of coats of gloss varnish. Now you can use a rattle can. I'm using a polyurethane gloss by Vallejo here in my airbrush. I thinned it about two drops of thinner to varnish to get it through here and I'm going to apply a few coats uh, until it's nice and shiny and that's to prep it for the next couple of stages one of which is going to be an oil pin wash so for this we're using a dark brown it's called sepia by uh, Abtalung 502 so I'll pop a little bit in a metal well here uh, a lot of people often ask about these if you just google uh, search for metal mixing dishes for paint you'll see these they're not expensive uh, and then I'm going to thin this down using mineral spirits into a wash consistency. And I've done a whole video on pin washing, so which I'll link up in the corner, um, give you some tips and stuff. So whilst I'm doing this, I just wanted to take a sec to thank you very much for your support over here on YouTube, but particularly those of you that support us over on Patreon. It's allowing us to produce a couple of videos a week between myself and Andy. And we're also bringing in other artists such as Ben, our commissions head, uh, Baz is doing his sculpting tutorials over there and we've got some great people lined up for next year as well. If you weren't, you know, if we didn't have that support from you lot, we would simply wouldn't be able to do the, the quantity that we're doing, take time to reinvest back in what we've got, improve our equipment, improve all the rest of it. Um, so we're incredibly grateful for all that support and I hope you're all enjoying 
uh, the work that we're putting out. And if you've ever got particular requests um, for schemes, do let us know. You know, we, we like to we like to help people out where we can like that. Now, once that oil wash is dry, I did the transfers at the same time. Just left it overnight to dry in the end because it's easier with transfers, I find. Once all that's dried, and I'll pop a video up in the uh, link in the corner for doing decals transfers, um, I'm going to hit the model with an ultra matte varnish. This is because I want it to have a really, really nice matte finish to it, the armor color. Um, you pick the finish you like, but I really like ultra matte. And here you can see once that varnish is dried, I've just blacked out all the other details on the model. Now I like to black out the details before I then paint them in with metals and things. I think it gives you a better separation and definition. Um, you may choose not to and you might just base coat it with your metal and do a wash. That's fine. But this is the way I've often worked um, and I enjoy the outcome of it. Now I want to do a tiny bit more to the armor. You might want to leave it pretty much pristine like we've got it here. But I like to add a little bit of chip in, a little bit of battle damage. Um, so I've got a sponge. I've mixed in a little off-white color, it's called ice yellow, into my bad moon yellow. You could absolutely use white, that'd be absolutely fine. Um, I'm just gonna sponge a few chips on here and there to the areas where I think it would uh, take the most damage. And take your time again with this. It's much easier to add more than it is to remove them. And once I've finished with that, I'm going to go in with my brush. I'm just going to reach any of those hard to reach areas with the sponge that I wasn't able to get to. Um, do a little bit of edge highlighting and a few little scratches. The edge highlighting, again, is, is personal preference. I certainly like to do it at least around that focal area. So the collar, the chest, the, the helmet, if it had one, shoulder pad, the backpack, that sort of thing. Just because, you know, as I say, focal area, that's where people are going to look at the model when they pick it up. That's the area that you know you really want to show it off if you're putting the effort in like you are. And by all means, you could do the entire model. It just takes an awful lot longer. So it's all about how much work you're happy to put in with it. But I love that black and yellow. And I think when you paint in the details black before you then fill them in, I think it gives you a really good idea of now what this armor color is going to be like. When the whole model is just that messy color, can be a bit overwhelming I think sometimes and, and you can maybe lose a little bit of confidence with the project. Um, I often find you know until I'm about 90% of the way through a model I hate it um, but it all starts to click and come together um, but with marines I find it comes together once I've done that blacking out phase. Now I'm just going for a little brown here uh, I'm using Thomnia brown because it's what we used before um, so it's fewer paints you know so it's more economical but also it's on my desk already I'm not having to go and fetch a different one um, so again, when we're army painting, all these little things, they add up over the sessions. Um, and I'm just using my brush to apply a few little chips of this darker color, just to represent a little bit of corrosion uh, on the model. Uh, again, you know, do as much or as little as you like. Um, generally, I like my stuff very heavily battle damaged. And you'll have seen from some of my other videos, that this isn't often the way I, I go about it, but it's a very, very efficient way of getting a nicely sort of grimed up model. For the black parts of the model, I've just mixed a little bit of that white into the black and done the, the chips in grey uh, rather than the, the light yellow colour. It's one of the reasons I put that different shoulder pad on him just so I could do a, a little bit of black uh, on the armour trim there. So at this stage, there's really not much left to do on the model. I just want to paint the metal details in. Uh, for this, I'm using Metal Colour Series Steel by Vallejo. Wonderful metallic paints, are very, very smooth. Um, I always put them in a little well palette because if I use them on my wet palette, they split very quickly. Um, but they apply ever so smooth the brush, even though they're, they're marketed as an airbrush paint, they're lovely to use with the brush. But all I would recommend is that you shake the bejesus out of them because they, they really do separate if you're not careful. So again, take your time at this point, be neat, be accurate. You've put a lot of work in already. Be ashamed to splodge a load of metallic paint all over it. And then once that's dry, I'm going to take a 50-50 mix of black oil and the sepia that we used before. And I'm just going to wash this all over the metallic parts of the model. So I made this wash up exactly like I did the, uh, the brown one I showed earlier. But I wanted it to be a bit darker, particularly on the metals, because it just adds that little bit more definition, uh, a little bit more contrast, which again is going to help our armies really show up when they're on the table. The head I've painted just... I'll link up in there the same as I, I paint most of the uh, the sort of Caucasian skin sort of quick quick heads for the um, the videos. So I'll pop the link up to that. And the very final step I'm going to do is take a, a lighter metal color. For this, I think it was 
Well, I've just mixed silver into the gun metal actually and into the steel rather but just a lighter silver and just pick out a few points of the metal just to bring the shine back that the oil dulls down. So there he is done. Um, I'll pop the pigments I've used down uh, in the description for the basing but it's the same basing I do for most of the YouTube videos which again there's a video about how you can do it. Um, I've thoroughly enjoyed this and whilst it's not necessarily my cup of tea I think it looks cool and I think an army like this would look absolutely fantastic and actually it was a, a model a chaos model I'd seen of someone over on our culture of paint show uh, that they'd done a yellow and black chaos marine that was this much darker yellow color um, and I really really liked it so I thought it'd be good fun to try out for the fists I think it was and this is him next to the original one I painted so you can see very very different um, but if you you know you can apply the the theory from both of those videos and the color recipes from both those videos whatever way you like to get the yellow that you're after and if you're going to be painting imperial fists you know that's their thing right marines generally it's their armor color but fists i think particularly you know we've all faced off against you know castle banana and whatever when we've been playing them so i think it's key that we get that right so I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you've got any questions about the scheme, pop it down in the comments. I'll get back to you as soon as you can. Check out the Heresy playlist for recipes for all the other legions. Um, I quite fancy painting Rogal Dawn soon. I've got to do that for a friend of mine. So if you'd like me to document that uh, over on YouTube, um, let me know in the comments as well. Maybe a two-part of how we do a character model like that. That could be good fun as well. So thanks ever so much for watching. I'll see you next time.